Hi, I'm Virginia Lindsay of Ginger Cake, and today I'm going to show you how to make one of the most popular tutorials on my blog. It's called the Vintage Inspired Dinner Roll Holder, and I love it for uh, several reasons. It's a great little piece to make for your Thanksgiving table. It also reminds me of my own Thanksgiving table when I was a child. My mom used to bring out the dinner roll holder and I thought it was a magical piece of uh, fabric artistry. Uh, this is an example of a, a vintage one that I found at a um, that I found at an antique shop a few years ago. Uh, we are going to make one a little bit more simple with some modern fun fabrics and um, it's going to be really fun. To begin you need to gather your materials and tools together. Um, and what you need are six 12 inch circles of fabric. Uh, this is just quilting weight fabric. Um, this is a cute little mushroom fabric from the Woodwinked collection by Dear Stella. And then this is just fabric from Joann's. Um, so I used a embro one of embroidery hoop to measure out my uh, fabric pieces. Uh, this is, you can use a big plate or figure out how to cut out a circle, anything you need to make a 12 inch circle. Um, you need pins, you need pinking shears. Um, I used my rotary cutter to cut out the circles. And you need um, either, a, this is a disappearing ink marker, you can also use chalk. Um, you need something that will, just, you need to make a mark and then be able to get rid of it with a damp cloth if you use chalk. And then um, also you need some of these sew on snaps. Um, you could also use the kind of snaps that you hammer in or um, you could use ribbons even, but I'm going to show you how I use the snaps. You only need three of these snaps. This is just the whole sheet. Uh, you also need your sewing machine and coordinating thread and an ironing board and an iron. So let's begin. The first thing you're going to do is sew your circles together. You can see that I chose two different fabrics here uh, that coordinate. This is for my kids' table at, the, uh, at Thanksgiving, so I chose this fun fabric. Um, you're going to pin them right sides together, all six circles, so that they... Um, and then we're going to sew all around the perimeter and leave a two-inch gap for turning. Now we're just going to sew around the entire edge, leaving a two inch opening uh, of these two, the two pieces together, uh, right sides together. Um, we're going to use a three eighth inch seam allowance. I'm using my walking foot. You don't necessarily have to use a walking foot. I just, uh, I like to use it. I'm kind of walking foot addicted right now. Okay, now that you've sewn all the way around and left your two inch opening for turning, you're going to remove all your pins and then cut, trim down this seam with uh, your pinking shears. And what that will do is just when you turn this all inside out and press it, it'll make the edge of your circle look a lot more even. So now cut uh, all around with pinking shears. So you can see I sewed both of these together and then I used the pinking shears all the way around. And now I'm just going to turn this little circular piece inside out through that two inch opening you left. And get it nice and um, make sure you didn't miss any seams. And then we're going to press it flat. One thing I do, sometimes I kind of run my fingers all around the edges to make sure that the seam is entirely rolled out. But it should be fine when you iron it all. So now it's nice and flat. And next, you simply just top stitch all the way around this edge and start right before the opening so that you close that shut. Okay, so now you should have three three circles sewn together from the six and they should all look exactly like and the next thing we're going to do is take two of the, let this one sit aside for now and take two of the circles and layer them on top of each other and then you want to mark the center 
Um, you can do this in a variety of ways. You know, use your ruler. I have one of these big plexiglass um, quilting rulers, which is super helpful in sewing. And you want to mark the center, and I can use my glass, uh, my plexiglass ruler to do it. Mark the center right here. And next, you're going to also use the markings on the plexiglass to mark at 60 degrees. There's 60 degrees here and 60 degrees here. And you want to just center it and take your disappearing ink pen or chalk or whatever you need to use and mark along the line here. Then we're going to make a pie, sort of draw a pie right on top of our fabric here. And then we're going to, this will be our guide to sewing and making those nice dividers. And then mark this one. And then straight through the middle is the last one. And using your guide. Okay, now that you have all of your, uh, the lines drawn, or the lines sewn, to make your kind of little pie piece here. And you can see that everything is sewn together into these um, six sections. We're going to add the final circle in. And the way you do that is layer these two on top of this one. And what I like to do is put the um, kind of the inside, you know, this is like my um, small scale kind of contrast print. I put these together. You can also go this way. It doesn't really matter if you have two more bold fabrics. But I like this so that this um, fun mushroom print is going to be seen on the outside. So I have those together and everything is all lined up. And um, we're going we're gonna to pin uh, in, bet in between each of the six sections. Uh, or you can, you can do a pin or we just need to basically mark the center between the sections where we're going to put our final bit of sewing in to make everything come together into the dinner roll divider. So we're just marking here in between each one. You're going to do this six times because you have six little sections right in the center of each section. Now use those markings that you made in between the pie pieces here at your sewing machine and sew in a couple inches. You know, back stitch and then sew. You can't sew in all that far because of the and this doesn't matter perfectly. If you want to get a perfect couple inches in, like two and a half inches, two and a quarter inch, you can mark it in. But um, I usually just kind of wing it here and get a nice, you know, you get in about, you, your sewing machine can't get in too far because of the pockets. And then we just move around and do that with each one. So the precision here doesn't matter, absolutely. You just want to get in and kind of gauge a few sections with a little straight line. If you're someone who needs a little bit more, if you want to make that mark, it makes you feel more comfortable, go ahead and do that. Um, I've done this a bunch of times, so I don't need to make the mark anymore, but it is, um, it is helpful when you're first getting started, for sure. Just have a... So you go ahead and do that mark, that two and a half inches in, and we're going, in, we're going uh, between the second layer and the third layer here. You're not sewing on that top layer. It's the second and the third layer. Now that you sewed that third layer on and everything kind of, you can kind of mess around with it and see that the um, layers all come together in this really great way, um, it's now time to put on the snap so that your dinner roll holder will be complete. Uh, you have two sets of snaps and the first one goes up here, up high, right here, and then the next one goes here, and then the two males, these are the females in these sections, and the two males go right here. So you have the female up high, a female over here, and the two males right here, and you have one, two, three sections that are empty. Okay, so I sewed the buttons on, or the snaps on by hand. Now for the magic of putting everything together. You put the female and the male together here, 
and the female and the male together here. And we have this adorable little dinner roll holder. Put it on your on your Thanksgiving table or anytime. Put your dinner rolls in there. Also, I've had friends say they use it for sewing things or for their bathroom. You can do all sorts of organization with it. Um, and there's also a detailed detailed instructions on my blog uh, at gingercake.org, and uh, you can find. I'll put the link in the comments for you to find that. Thank you very much. You can also find lots of other tutorials and my patterns there on my website. So I hope you enjoyed making the vintage inspired dinner roll holder with me. Thanks so much.